the minimalist aspect of graphic design mm -hmm. is what I ch I transfer into like when I design clothing and shoes because mm -hmm. less is still more. Yeah, I wanted to be like nonverbal. I, mean, I have tattoos all over, right? So yeah. like my tattoos act a lot, mm -hmm. speaking for me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, I wonder if a person stands next to Russ and Russ is like this. He's looking down his feet like, why not? Okay, why not? Why not? Why not do whatever he wants to do? Somebody next to him, his opponent is sitting there like, why not? Yeah. Should I box him out? And so it's like a conversation, but not like a nonverbal. Like that is so important. I was inspired by just, I mean, Russ is always writing on his stuff. This is just a canvas. Like to me, I don't even see a shoe. I want the people to fall in love with the with it and wear the stuff every day. That was my thing when I was thinking like, man, if Jackson Pollock was painting a piece or Jean-Michel was painting or when Keith Haring was painting his pieces, he would get paint all over his shoes. Keith Haring was actually one of the few that really wore Nike and Jordans and created. So he's like a very big inspiration for me and splattering paint on stuff. Sometimes it's real intimate. Like, I mean, with my jeans, like I know every piece that like my friend designed these jeans. I know every painting that I've like brushed this because I use this as my palette. When I went to the Seattle Art Museum, they had this artist's whole outfit displayed in glass. And I was like, that's gonna be me. Because that matters, man. Outfits matter. What you wear matters. Otherwise, Steve Jobs wouldn't have had a uniform. You can go into the MoMA and look at a Rembrandt or a Jackson Pollock piece, but you can't take it off the wall and wrap it on your back. And I think that, like, yo, soon, like, these shoes will be in the moment. Like, the shoes that I put paint on and I draw on, and, and I want, you know, the kids in, what's it, 2050 or something, and be like, yo, check these why nots that, you know, and they're, and they're displayed in the MoMA or, like, the Louvre, you know what I'm saying? So that's, I always saw it as fine art. Fine art, and would my mom want to wear this? She's a great, she's my hardest critic. Yeah. At the end of eighth grade, I started to become more cognizant of just the sense of everybody starting to dress similar. I started painting t-shirts at my church. I remember the first t-shirt I painted took me five hours to do, and my homegirl paid me five dollars for it. A dollar an hour. I could do this. I felt it in my spirit that it wasn't about the money. Like how they always talk about, like if you sure. do something for free, I was like, yo, this is really real. Like sure. that dollar an hour didn't matter. It was yeah. like, you know, this is what I'm here to create and do. You know, I started graphic design, honestly, because my mom said that's how I was gonna make money. And I listened to my mom. I didn't really like graphic design. Just the people weren't as nice and welcoming. They're really like, Ugh. With, with the designs. Their own protected community. Exactly, yeah, you can't just be able to go over and say like, I like what you're doing. Like, no, I'm working on a logo for so and so. Sure. You can't see this, you know? So I met Kadir Nelson. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he painted the Drake album cover. He hand painted, those are oil paintings. So I went and met him. I was like, y'all wanna do what you do. I wanna make money from painting. If you're good at anything, you'll make money. It was like a seed that was planted in my, in my spirit. Cause as soon as I got back to, to university, I changed my major from graphics to painting. Personally, I don't like customs, but I like to create. And I like to design in a sense that would inspire other people to create. So that's what this whole thing has been about.